Mount Nebo Church family, we praise God tonight for all that he has done for truly the Lord is blessing us even right now in the midst of everything. He is still worthy to be praised and we do praise him on tonight for his goodness, for his grace, and certainly for his mercy. Tonight for our Bible study time, I want us to look at 1 Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5, and we want to begin reading around uh, verse 5. We're going to read down to verse 11, but let me just do this while it's on my mind, so before I get caught up in the Bible study lesson, please ma'am, please sir, let your friends, let your neighbors know that we will have a parking lot service this coming Sunday for Easter. We would love to see each of you come out and share with us on this Resurrection Sunday. We certainly are looking for God to do some great and mighty things, and we certainly would love to see even nothing else but to see your face in your car on this coming Sunday. So please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, just know that we won't have our uh, usual format of worship service uh, via virtual format, but we will have service nonetheless on the first Sunday we will take our communion as well this Sunday coming on the first Sunday on Resurrection Sunday. So come out, come one, come all. Come as you are and stay in your car. God bless you. That's our church announcement for tonight. Amen. Let's get into our lesson. First Peter chapter 5 beginning at verse 5 down through verse 11. And I want to read this tonight from the English Standard Version. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another, for God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Verse 6, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you. Casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Verse 8, be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. I want to talk tonight in this Bible study lesson, I want to talk about growing in humility. Growing in humility. Growing in humility. Next to love, humility perhaps stands out more clearly than any other virtue in the Bible. In fact, Christ says humility is the real virtue that God desires to develop in each of us. So our lesson tonight comes out of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. He says, likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Watch what he says. Clothe yourselves, watch the language, all of you. That's young and old alike. He says, clothe yourselves all of you with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace, favor to the humble. Here's how the Living Bible reads, and I like the way it expounds on this verse. It says, you younger men, follow the leadership of those who are older. And all of you serve each other with humble spirits. For God gives special blessings to those who are humble, but sets himself against those 
who are proud. We can never, Mount Nebo, be submissive to each other until we are first submissive to God. Let me say that again tonight, just in case somebody's taking notes. We can never be submissive to each other until we are first of all submissive to God. J. Allwells, Allwell Sanders said, pride is like an onion. You take off one skin and you come to another and then another steel and all the while it makes you cry. Think about that tonight. Notice how he says, he said, pride is like an onion. You take off one skin and you come to another, then another steel, all the while it makes you cry. Humility then is the natural outgrowth of a life that has its foundation built upon God's grace and mercy. So with that, let me pose a question tonight. Why is humility such a prized virtue with God, but oftentimes it is rejected and neglected by humanity? In other words, God holds humility in high esteem, but humanity oftentimes relegates humility down to the lower tier. Humility doesn't mean that one is weak. That's a false understanding and a bad definition of what humility is. Humility doesn't mean that you are weak, that you are soft, that you are a pushover, that anybody can just do anything and say anything to you. No, that's not humility. You can still be strong and yet still exhibit great humility. In fact, I love the way the 1828 Webster Dictionary defines humility. It says, in ethics, humility is freedom from pride and arrogance, <laughs> humbleness of mind. A modest estimate of one's own worth. In theology, humility consists of in lowliness of mind. It's a deep sense of one's own unworthiness in the sight of God, self-abasement, penitence for sin, and submission to the divine will. Humility is a conscious awareness that I am absolutely and completely nothing without God. That's humility. Everything that I'm able to do is because God has given me the knowledge, God has given me the strength and the power, and he's given me the ability to do it. Without him, I would not be able to stand before you tonight. It's only because of the grace and mercy of God that I'm standing where I'm standing at right now. It is out of that respect for God, a possessing of a God-like awareness that causes me to humble myself before the sovereign king of kings. And then it causes me to serve him with my whole heart. That's humility. Watch this now. You remember Luke chapter 10, verse 25 through 37, Jesus shares the parable of the good Samaritan. Listen at this. This parable comes to light as a young lawyer challenges Jesus by asking him what he must do to inherit eternal life. Huh. Jesus replies by saying in verse 26, he said to him, 
What is written in the law? What is your reading, or basically, what is your understanding, your interpretation of what it's saying? So the young lawyer, he answered and said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Verse 28, Jesus responds by saying, you have answered rightly. Do this and you will live. But then, now watch this now. Verse 29, the young lawyer comes back with another response. But he, wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Stay with me tonight. It is from this story that Jesus gives insight on what it means to be a true follower of his. You got to understand that the Jericho Road connected Jerusalem and Jericho. It's about a 17 mile journey and Though in those 17 miles, the road dropped some 3,600 feet below sea level. It was a dangerous road. So much so that people would sometimes pay money to the locals to provide security on their behalf. Jericho Road represents violence and oppression. It's a place where people are robbed of their dignity as well as their freedom. This story gives us a vivid look at the heart and the attitude of several individuals in the story. We have the man who's traveling from Jerusalem down the Jericho Road. We have the robbers who beat him, strip him of all of his possessions, and leave the man for dead by the side of the road. But then now we see some other folk in this story as well. It says, now by chance, a certain priest came down that road, the Jericho road, and when he saw him, the man who had been beaten and stripped and left for dead, watch what he does. He passed by on the other side. My, my, my. Verse 32. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. Now, let me pause there for a moment. Here's this Levite who not only does not render aid to the man who has been beaten and left for dead. He comes, he has the audacity to come and look at the man, see the man in a dire situation he looks at him, he takes notice of him, he examines his condition, and yet his heart is unmoved by the tragedy that has come upon this man. Mm. My, 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 my. What a sad indictment that when we look at our, our world, our country, our communities today, so many people are passing by other folk who are hurting, who are bleeding, and no, they're not bleeding and hurting in the sense of a physical hurting, but they're hurting and bleeding spiritually while many are passing by on the other side. Watch this now. Verse 33. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, watch what the text says, he had 
compassion. Huh. My, 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 my. When, when, watch what he says. When he saw him, something pricked in his heart. He, here's McKenzie 101. I, I like to say that he saw in the man himself in the same predicament. Had it not been for the grace and mercy of God, he saw himself in the same condition, he didn't make prejudgments on the man. He saw the man and was moved with compassion for the man. Hmm. One personal takeaway from this story is humility seeks to serve the needs of others. That's humility. It, it, takes, it takes humility to stoop down and help somebody else. I believe it was Reverend Jesse Jackson said, we should never look down on a man unless we are helping him up. Think about that tonight. We, we have no place, we have no room to look down on others as if we are some high echelon of believers. No, we, we are all where we are only because of the grace and the mercy of God smiling upon us. And it's because God has kept us and watched over us that we have not fallen into the same predicaments as some other folk. So we have no room tonight. Turn our noses up at anyone. We ought to have the same attitude and the same heart of compassion that the good Samaritan has in the story. Not only did he see the man, but he took time to take care of this man. So humility seeks to serve the needs of others. In other words, I'm not seeking to feed my ego. Mm. You do know what ego is. I shared this 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 acrostic some time ago in a leadership meeting that we had. Ego, ego, e g o is edging God out. Mm. That's edging God out. Anytime we seek to promote ourselves over against and above the the, the mission and the mandate of God. That's our ego getting in the way. That is, we are moving God out of the way and we are attempting to take his place because it is about us and not about him. But can I just tell somebody tonight, it is never about us. It is always about him and his kingdom and the glory that comes along with serving him. Not seeking to feed my ego. Do something that's going to make me popular or have great fame. No. No, my desire is simply to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Watch this now. Paul says in Philippians 2, beginning at verse 5, he says, Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus who, here it is being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Watch this now. Stay with the text. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above everything name. My God. Paul opens that text in verse 5 by simply saying let this mind, the mind of Christ be in you. 
And then he tells us what the mind of Christ looks like and the action, the activity that pours out of one who has a humble, a humility, a spirit of humility abiding and resting in them. It's growing in humility. How do we do that? We do that because God is the standard. Watch this, Isaiah 57 and 15. It says, For thus said the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. So then, salvation by grace goes hand in hand with humility. Salvation by grace goes hand in hand with humility. The humble gratefully receives the promises of God without a works oriented mentality. This is Christianity. It's not a works based type religion. It's it's, it's a religion, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a following, if you will, that's predicated solely on the finished works of Jesus Christ. You can't work your way into heaven. No, you, you can't work your way into heaven. You can't buy your way into heaven. But listen now, tonight Christ has set the bar and because he came lowly, and humble and ministering, which means to serve others, we are then expected to do the same because he himself has set the path. He has given us the example to follow. And, and since we belong to him, we are to model what he has done. Watch this. God resists the proud because God hates the sin of pride. You do know that pride is a sin. God resists the proud because he hates the sin of pride. Proverbs 6, 18 and 19. Pride goes before destruction. I could stop right there. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Verse 19 says, Better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Hmm. It was pride desire to be like God that stirred the heart and the mind of Eve to take a bite of a forbidden fruit. And then when she took a bite of the forbidden fruit, then she convinced her husband, Adam, to do likewise, which causes a chain reaction in the bloodline of all humanity. That, that's why, that's why we, we, are, we are where we are now, but, but thanks be to God that God stepped in with a miracle of mercy and saw us in our fallen state and said to Eve, here's going to be the result of your action, but just because you fail doesn't mean I'm going to fail. From your loins will come the seed that will crush the head of the serpent. Thank God tonight that even when we fall, even when we falter and fail, that God stands ready to lift us from our fallen situations. Thank God tonight for his grace and his mercy. Pride of life 
is an evidence of worldliness. And the only cure for pride is the grace of God. Let me say that again. The only cure for pride is the grace of God. Let me share one more thing with you and I'm going to get out of your way tonight. So God is the standard. But then there's false humility. False humility. We oftentimes falsify humility by a counterfeit. That is, that self-abasement. Paul writes in Colossians chapter 2, verse 21 through 23, he says, Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgency of the flesh. So here it is. False humility demands that God applaud our self-denial. But true humility makes no such claims on God. True humility submits to the reign of God. Position, prestige, privilege, partiality, all of these brothers fall before the humble. In other words, it no longer is about my position. I'm just happy to serve. It's no longer about prestige. I'm just happy to serve. It's no longer about privilege. It's I'm just happy to serve. It's no longer about partiality. I'm just happy to serve. Here's what the old folk would say. They said, I'm just glad to be in the service just one more time. Here it is. Because they came to the conclusion that he did not have to let me live. That's why I'm just glad to be in the service just one more time. Hmm. False humility. Watch this. And I'm going to stop right here tonight after this. Romans 12 and 3. We'll pick it up next week. Romans 12 and 3. NIV says, For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. What is Paul saying in this text? He says, think of yourself with sober judgment. Notice here now what Paul says in this text and what he does not say. He does not say that we should not think of ourselves highly in any sense. In other words, we are people of worth and value. In other words, don't look down on yourself and don't allow others to degrade you in the process. You are, according to Psalms 139 and verse 14, he says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. In other words, don't allow somebody else to put you down when God has already elevated you. Stay with me. Listen at this as the Message Bible translation, verses 13 through 16. It says, oh yes. You shake me first inside, then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. 
I thank you, high God, you are breathtaking. Body and soul, I am marvelously made. Did y'all catch that? Body and soul, I am marvelously made. I worship in adoration. What a creation. You know me inside and out. And you know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made bit by bit. How I was sculpted from nothing into something. Mm. Like an open book. You watch me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I even lived one day. Watch this. Can I just shout you out tonight before I close? Can I just give you a shout out tonight? First of all, Never let people take you back to a place that God has delivered you from. It's in the text. I'm not saying nothing that's not in Psalms 139. Watch this. Watch this. You know exactly how I was made. Bit by bit, how I was sculpted from nothing into something. God took nothing and made something. Y'all didn't get it. Let me say it again. God took nothing and made something. God took nothing and made something. So if God has carefully and strategically crafted you into something marvelous, why would you allow somebody else to make you doubt who you really are? Mm, talk to me tonight somebody I am somebody And that's not being arrogant That's not being prideful That's not being stuck up But God made me Who I am and I refuse to allow Someone who does not know My true worth My true value Who I am To cause me to go back And cause me to doubt Who I am in Christ Jesus Paul says, don't think more highly than you ought to think. That's what he says. To be humble doesn't mean that I allow someone to create havoc and chaos and wreck my life. No, I'm somebody because God doesn't make any jump. But then last thing, and I'm done. Don't allow the devil, the enemy, to use your past sins to law them over your head. And don't you let other people do it. We are not to be caught off guard by the remnants of sinful flesh that still clings to our transformed self. We are a new creation in Christ, but there is still something that God is working in each of us. In other words, God is not through with us, so don't, don't allow folk to cripple you and make you ashamed. Yes, you're going to mess up. Yes, we all going to do that. It doesn't matter who we are from the pulpit to the back door. We're all subject to sin and we're still going to sin. But don't allow the enemy and other people to use that against you. God is still working on me. There's still some stuff in my life that God is still purging out of me. There's still some habits that God is still delivering me from. I wish I had somebody that would just scream hallelujah tonight. If you are not careful, Satan and people will have you doubting your salvation. Well, can I just keep it real for a moment? Salvation does not come as a result of anything that you and I have done. No. Uh -uh. Salvation comes because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross on our behalf. Sin is something we still do. There is no perfect individual. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 
We fall as we continue to grow and mature in Christ, but that does not mean that I'm not saved. Salvation is not only what has occurred in the past. We have been forgiven. We are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. But we are also being saved. That is, God is still working in my life. I, 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 like, I like the way Steve Harvey said it. Steve Harvey said it some years ago. He said, don't trip. God ain't through with me yet. That's what I want to tell somebody tonight. Don't trip. If you see me mess up, if you see me fall, don't trip because God ain't through with me yet. He's still working in my life. And that the truth be told tonight, he's still working in your life as well. We will fall sometimes. Sin does not define who we are as Christians. We were ain'ts. That got turned into some saints. <laughs> we, we were some ants. Nothing. That got turned into some saints. Some something. God took nothing and made something out of every one of us. So I refuse to allow people to relegate me down to a place that God has elevated me from. He took me from nothing and made something out of me. Doesn't make me arrogant. That doesn't make me boastful. That doesn't make me prideful. That just makes me appreciate who I am in Christ Jesus because I understand, as I said earlier, and I'm done. As I said earlier, I understand tonight, my Nebo, that I am absolutely and completely nothing without Jesus Christ. Nothing without Him. God bless you tonight. Uh, I got more to say, but I'm out of time. I got to stop right there. We'll pick it up next week. Growing in humility. When you get a moment, just read 1 Peter chapter 5. Beginning at verse 5, read down through verses 11. And I believe tonight that you'll be blessed by the word because the word is rich. The word is powerful. The word is life transforming. God bless you. Let's pray and we'll be done. Father, we thank you tonight. For your word, we thank you, Lord God, that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Help us now, O oh God, to hide your word in our hearts that we may not sin against thee. Bless us now, O oh Father, as we have served these your people. Father, we pray tonight that you would take these few words of ours and make something out of them. Let them reach down into the very heart, the core of your people and touch their souls, touch their spirits, God, that they would be transformed by the power of your word. God, we praise you and we realize tonight, Father, that we are nothing without you. We thank you, God, that you took us out of the muck and the mire clay and set our feet upon a rock to stay. God, we thank you and we glorify your name. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus the Christ. We do ask and trust. Amen. God bless you. Till next time, grow in humility. God bless you.